All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule impeccably well. Shalom to the hopeful elect, pushing this truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe in the sincere hopes of being delivered in these last days. This is the brother Yakanan from the GMS Single and Branch. This will serve as a brief video based upon this article that you see here on the screen. And um, this was posted by, you know, one of the brothers in the group chat we have over here in the UK. And um, as you can see, it's entitled Hand Implanted CHIP Could Be Used for Contactless Payments. All right. And I believe, you know, this month, you know, of April, you know, this is like maybe the third or fourth article I've personally seen regarding the promotion of the MOTB, you know, the Revelations 13 and 16, which, you know, you all should know, you know, what that is by now, all right? The MOTB, the Revelations 13 and 16, because, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshim, Yahweh Shai Barshim, Dash, starting with Elder Apostle Taha on down to the other apostles and elders and brothers of Great Millstone, you know, we do nothing but warn you of the coming prophecy regarding the MOTB, okay? Because it's a fundamental and very important prophecy that must indeed come to pass before the coming of our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai, okay? And that's, the, that's why the Spirit, you know, be on us to push it, you know, so heavy, and so relentlessly, okay? Because it's very, very important. And if you don't have the correct understanding on what the MOTB actually is, then your spiritual well-being, you know, could well indeed be at risk, all right? And that's why it's so important to warn the people regarding the coming events that's going to play out upon the face of the earth, man, all right? So there's a video here which I won't play. But what I'll do, I'll post the um, the link to this article in the description box. And basically it says here, London, a tech company is rolling out a CHIP that can be implanted in people's hands with a goal of making contactless payments easier. Okay. So as if, you know, it wasn't already very easy to pay for a product, you know, using your phone or using your watch, you know, you have particular watches that are able to be synced up to your banking account and you can pay using your watch. So as if that wasn't as easier as it is, they're now making it go one step further into um actually putting this inside your hand, okay? Which is the Revelations 13 and 16, okay? This is what's spoken of in Revelations 13 and 16, all right? The MOTB. This is biblical prophecy, all right, coming come to pass, you know, before your very eyes. Now, it says London-based Walletmore said the CHIP will work with the Purist app, a digital wallet. After downloading the app, users will go to a specialist to have a CHIP installed in their hands that would act in conjunction with the app and businesses that use the app. Once users are completely set up with the CHIP, the app, they can make payments using the funds in their accounts. The company said the uh, implant process is safe. The skin incision for the implant is very small and is usually seven millimeters long and the procedure takes about four minutes, okay? So it's very quick, and they got the cost here. It says it's um $299, you know, according to the uh, company's website. So, you know, here we have it, you know, now you have the MOTB, you know, being pushed more and more in society, all right? Being legitimized and normalized, all right? And massaged amongst the people, all right, to precondition you, all right, into the idea 
of having this technology in your body. Okay? And this is a great sign of the end of Esau Edom's kingdom. Because like it says in the book of uh, Job, you know, let's get that. In Job chapter 14, you know, the spirit is had me think of Job 14, man, because this is excellent news. Because again, this is the sign of the end of this man's kingdom. All right. The end of his enterprise and his rulership, his kingdom, you know, coming to a drastic close through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barashim Shai, man. All right. So let's go to Job chapter 14 and uh, verse five. And it says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou have appointed, thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Okay. So Yahweh Barashim Shai has appointed bounds. Okay that Esau, Edom, as a nation of people, beginning with the elites, okay, are unable to pass, all right? There's a time that Yehawah Bar Shem Shai have put upon the rulership of Esau, Edom, okay? And they're unable to go past that time. And it tells us, like I always quote, you know, in 2nd Exodus 9, all right, that we're to measure the time diligently, okay? And we're to look out, for these events that are playing out upon the face of the earth and we're to sync it with the scriptures, all right? We're to sync it with the prophecies that are in the Bible, okay? So that's how we know that we're in the midst of the end of the world, okay? Because one of the last few prophecies, all right, to unfold upon the face of the earth before Esau's kingdom is totally destroyed by Yahweh Barashim Shai is the emergence of the MOTB, the Revelations 13 and 16, so that's how we know we're in the midst of the end of the world, okay? We're not going to be here for no 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years from now, okay? We're going to be in the kingdom. Lord willing, in the very, very near future, we are going to be in the kingdom. Because if the MOTB has already been promoted on this, on this, on this kind of level, that just shows you how close we are to the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shai, Okay? So seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou have appointed his bounds that he cannot pass, all right? So Esau is unable, all right, to extend the threshold that Yahweh Bar Shem Shai has set in place, no matter what he has in his mind, okay? Now let's go to, um, what's that, Psalms 49 and verse 11, because the reason they're trying to um, bring this um, to pass you know, the uh, transhumanism, all right, the forming of, um, you know, man and machine, so to speak, is to extend their kingdom and to extend their rulership upon the face of the earth and ignore the intent and the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Barashim Yahushai, which is not possible, okay? Because they cannot go outside the bounds, like we just read in the book of Job, okay, of what the Lord has prescribed them to rule for, man. So this is uh, Psalms 49 and verse 11. And it says their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Okay, so in the mind of the Edomite, all right, his inward thought is that his rulership, his kingdom can be actually be extended and continue forever. Okay, that's why, you know, you have these Edomite scientists that are desperately trying to crack the code of how it can be possible to live forever. All right, they're trying to edit the genes, you know, edit ge the uh, genetic makeup to make um, the cells in your body basically not deteriorate, all right, and continue forever. And you just had a report that came out a few days ago. They were saying that, you know, there was a, there was a group of scientists that basically found out a way to um, renew cells and extend them for a further 30 years, all right? So they're actually actively working on the plans of kind of trying to carnally get their birthright back, okay? Because that's what it's all about, all right? It's all about Jacob and Esau, okay? And I remember Elder Apostle Taha used to always say that this is all about Jacob and Esau, man. It's all about Esau trying to extend his rulership and rule upon the face of the earth forever through carnal means, not through spiritual means because he's not connected to the spirit, all right? So it says their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names, okay? 
And that's because in their own mind, they're going to be here ruling upon the face of the earth forever. And in their own mind, there is no one that can come against them. But Yahweh Shem Shai, you know, have chosen the basis of men, all right? Installed that demonic pride, you know, within their spirit, just so he could show his power in taking them down, okay? And that's why they've been exalted, just like um, in ancient Egypt, you know, when Pharaoh was, was exalted. He was only exalted and made powerful so he can be taken down. So the power of Yahweh Shem Shai could be magnified and glorified throughout the four corners of the globe. And that's what, what we're about to witness all over again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shai. All right. So we're at the end. All right. Like Elder Apostle Daha says, we're at the end of this thing, man. OK, because this is a real evil work that Esau is trying to perpetuate throughout the four corners of the globe. And let me get um the book of Proverbs 29 and 16. OK. This is Proverbs 29 and verse 16. And it says, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth. All right. So that's what we're seeing play out upon the four corners of the globe. All of this technology, all of this transhumanism, all of these intense, you know, of um, basically enslaving the world and having a mere, you know, 1% ruling that, that are currently ruling in secrecy. OK, they, they want all the power. All right. That's why they're buying all the farmland. OK, that's why, you know, they're releasing, you know, these plagues throughout the four corners of the globe. All right. That's why they're going to, you know, economically crash, you know, the whole system. All right. So they can press that reset button. You know, it's called the Great Reset and they can restart everything from scratch. OK. Or the Abkhail. OK. That's what Esau is trying to do. And this is a wicked work, man. OK. Because you're undermining the power of Yahweh Barashim Shai, and you're setting up yourself as the Most High, like it tells you in the book of Thessalonians, man. So Proverbs um, 29 and 16, again, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. That's right. And the righteous is beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All right. We're going to see the fall of the wicked. All right. We are going to see the fall of this wicked um, um, race of people, the Edomites, man. Okay. Now let's go to first, first Peter 4 and 7. And then we may close out after that. You know, this is just a brief um, update, you know, regarding this um, this article and where we are in terms of the prophecy of the um, the MOTB, all right? And the Revelations 13 and uh, verse 16. You know, let's get, um, let me get four and seven. Let me get first beat of four and seven. We get First Peter four and seven. This is First Peter's chapter four and um and verse seven. And it reads, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Alright, so the end of all things is at hand, man. Alright, all of these prophecies in the book in the Holy Bible are about to be fulfilled, you know, in our generation, all right, in these last days through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barashim Yahushai, all right? So this is the time of the end, all right? This is the day of doom spoken of in the, in the Apocrypha is actually in the mist, all right? And this is a beautiful thing because we want to see the downfall of Esau Edom's kingdom, okay? The demise of Esau Edom's kingdom and the rise of our kingdom, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barashim Yahushai Barashim Kakudash. So with that, Lord willing, this um this video was edifying. And until the next time, I'll say Shalom.